So I'm Melanie. I'm here with Canine Stray Rescue League. Um, I've been with the rescue about five and a half years. Um, I'm the foster coordinator here. Uh, I volunteer as well as I'm a board member. It's hard to get a good read on the dog and it's hard to tell sometimes that a dog is a great dog when they're stuck in the kennel environment living on a concrete slab. And it's nice when they go into foster care because we can get a little bit better feel of who they are as a dog and then we can find a better fitting home for them. We can learn if they do well with dogs or people or kids, cats for that matter. Cats in particular are really difficult for us here because we don't have cats on site. So if you do become a foster with us. We do provide everything so it's not any expense to you. We'll provide you with the things that you'll need such as a cage, food, if you need doggy bowls. Um, you know, we have support for you as well. So if you are interested in becoming a foster, uh, email us at caninestrayrescue at yahoo.com and we will put you in touch with me and uh, we'll see if you're a good fit for fostering with us. Good morning and welcome to Repose. We haven't seen each other for a little bit. It is a beautiful spring day today. So we're gonna reawaken the mind and body by getting back to basics. If you've fallen off your routines or if you are new to yoga and the practice, I wanna start by stepping back and getting into your space, your surroundings, and for most of you, it's your home. And before you can get into the mindset of yoga, that really peaceful or calm, relaxed state, you need to look at the space that you're in because we all have things that are left undone, chores waiting, uh, maybe clutter on the counter. And if you're looking at that and you're debating, am I gonna get that done or am I gonna do a little yoga for myself first? Um, it might be hard for you to separate and focus. So clearing a space that is just for you in this moment, in this time that you can come back to day after day or week after week. So just kind of giving yourself enough room to roll that mat or blanket out if you don't have a mat. Thinking about any props you might need. And the most universal prop that we can have in yoga is a blanket. Um, if you have issues with being on your knees, it can be a nice pad for that. We can roll it up for support to put under necks, legs, arms, um, even if you're sitting cross-legged to prop up a knee if it won't go down to the floor. Now I'm sitting on a bolster today. A bolster can be a folded up blanket as well or even a pillow. So the reason I use the bolster is to allow my hips to be up higher than my knees. This allows the pelvis to tilt back and not pinch the low back. So we are gonna start this morning's practice in a seated posture, so take a moment, look around the home, find out if there's things that you need or want for today's practice just to make yourself comfortable or to bring them nearby, but also the sounds. Silence is always a beautiful thing if you have a hectic, busy household and maybe they're not awake or they're gone early in the morning. Maybe opening the windows to hear the birds or nature because it is starting to warm up here in Michigan. We're putting on music that allows you to calm yourself, that you feel good about, that makes you smile. So once you've settled in, close your eyes, force a smile, because believe it or not, even when we force the smile and we tell our mind to be happy or even laugh at yourself, the fact that maybe you're pretending through it, it releases endorphins that actually do relax the mind and body. And then allow the face to be soft, relax the chin, the mouth, relax the jaw, maybe just moving it side to side. Check that the teeth aren't grinding. Press the tongue against the roof of your mouth and then relax it down. Check in with the forehead. Let the eyelids be heavy. Check in with your posture. Try to straighten the back. Lift the chest and pull the shoulders down. Check in with the face and neck again. Start to notice your natural breathing. This is the foundation and a fundamental of yoga. If you do nothing else today but relax in this space, then you are already doing yoga. And this is often the hardest part for today's busy world is to actually slow down 
and calm the body and mind and even be in stillness. So if you're finding that that is the biggest challenge for you, then start to focus in the sound of the breath. Breathe in and out just through the nose. Now this time of year, I know some of us have allergies and other things that might congest you. So if that's not possible right now, then try to breathe in through the nose as much as you can and let it out the mouth. But the reason our fundamental yoga breath is in and out through the nostrils is because the nose is actually our intended breath work. The mouth is for eating and emergency breath, but the nose cleanses the air, all those hairs and follicles stop bad things from coming in that you can't stop through your mouth breathing. It also warms the air before it enters the body. and controls the rate in which we take air in and out. And also when we breathe through an open mouth, it can even lead to dental issues like more cavities, drying out our mouth and our voices. So there's very real reasons why we breathe in and out through the nose, start to deepen the breath. As we age and we get older and we become busier, we start to do very shallow chest breathing. But that true natural breath is a full belly and chest experience. You actually balloon through the belly and the chest then fills and rises all the way up through the throat. So when you think you've inhaled where you can't inhale anymore, the last little sip will really let you know that you're filled and then slowly exhale through the nose. When you think you've pushed it all out, really working the diaphragm, squeezing that navel towards the spine and pushing it all out. And notice just in that breathing, the changes in our body and our mind. So practice that at home. Take a few more deep breaths. The deepest breath you've taken in a really long time. And if your mind needs even more distraction, start to count the seconds in which you're inhaling and the seconds in which you're exhaling. We want our exhale to be a little slower and longer than our inhale. It's the exhale that actually slows down the heart rate and reduces anxiety. So deep, full inhales, slow, long, intentional exhales. Feel the body relax with those exhales. Feel the shoulders come down. Feel the belly breathe in as you squeeze it out. When we busy the mind with the focus on every small detail in which the body is experiencing, we push out those busy thoughts. So when I have people ask about meditation and how we can actually clear the mind, my response is that the mind doesn't ever stop really thinking, but it is a more focused intention and thought where we can't think about something else. We can only think about this very moment or this single point that we're trying to meditate on. And right now that single point should be just the breath. Experiencing the breath and body in new ways or maybe in a way that you just haven't explored in a while. And on this last deep inhale, I want you to let it all out the mouth and just notice that quick expression, quick relief. We tend to do that after we've been holding our breath. When we're nervous or we're upset, we tend to tense up and hold our breath. And that quick release through the mouth does allow the body to just go into a quick state of release. <sighs> 
might be more familiar to you. When you're ready to start that breath again, eyes are open this time. Inhale, start to bring the arms overhead. This is gonna help us expand the back, front body, lungs. Bring the hands together and exhale through the nose as the hands come down to the heart center. Still the same nice deep breath. Inhale through the nose. Reach up. Feel the length of the spine. That might feel good. You might find you want to move a little bit once you get there. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Relax those shoulders down. A couple more of these to your own breath. Inhale again, arms reach overhead. This time we're gonna take the right arm down to the side. Left arm is gonna follow as we stretch and breathe into that left side body. Exhale, and if it's okay for the neck today, look up towards the arm and start to relax that shoulder a little bit more. Maybe you relax the elbow if we're not able to hold it up for very long. We wanna avoid leaning forward. This is really meant to be a deep stretch of the side. And while we're using the full lung to inhale, you'll notice that we're putting compression to that right side lung. So you really are breathing in the most through the left side body and that left lung. So just notice if it feels different from the left side to the right side. Yoga is about noticing what's really going on in our body, paying attention to what our needs are. And when they're different, Trying to figure out the root of that. Is it the way we're standing or carrying things throughout the day? And then working towards balancing our movements in our everyday life. Inhale to reach overhead, bringing that arm back down. Inhale, bring the shoulders up towards the ears and exhale as you draw them back and down. Hands reach towards the floor again. Find length. In every yoga practice, when we are completing it, whether it's five minutes or an hour long practice for the day, you should leave feeling a little taller, a little bit lighter. Inhale, bring the arms straight out to a T, out to the side. And notice how you're sitting. I'm going to bring my right hand over to my left knee, which happens to be the top leg in my posture. I feel that I get a better twist that way. So if you're sitting differently, maybe you're twisting to the other side first, start to draw that left shoulder back. If the right arm is over to the left knee, the left shoulder comes back, looking over the left shoulder as much as you're able to. If you're only able to look towards the side wall, then stop right there and just soften the face and continue to breathe. As you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, Find a little bit of a squeeze and twist a little bit deeper. As you inhale, maybe we're relaxing that to fill the lungs. So it's gentle, very subtle rocking. I'm gonna exaggerate it for the camera and for those watching at home. And then as you inhale this last time with that left arm, start to bring it forward to the knee. Right hand crosses over, settle those shoulders in again. And bring the hands down to the side and we're gonna sit in the opposite way. Take a moment to just breathe new life into those limbs. Wiggle the toes, rotate the ankles. Maybe you need to shake out the knees. Maybe you need to adjust the seat or you've decided to come off of the pillow or the blanket that maybe you're sitting on and try to focus on how you were sitting before and doing it the opposite way. So for me, my right leg is on top of my left. Lengthen the spine, a couple just relaxing breaths, relax the shoulder. Inhale, arms come overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms come overhead, lengthen. And do one more.
And at the top of that inhale, that left hand is gonna come down to the floor, right arm reaches over this time, relax the arm, head looks up towards the sky as much as you're able to. This time focusing on the breath into that right lung, feeling the stretch in that right side body. And again, you're gently squeezing to the left with each exhale, filling the body on the inhale. Just notice that subtle rocking motion just through the breath without even trying. Deep inhale is gonna expand, exhale allows us to squeeze in. One more. And inhale, start to reach that arm up and over, back down to the floor. And your next inhale, arms come out to a T. We're gonna cross arms the opposite way. So if you went to the left last time, we'll twist to the right this time. Left arm is coming over to my right knee. Right arm reaches behind. Inhale to fill the lungs, exhale to squeeze into that twist a little more deeply. On your next inhale, start to lift that right arm up. Rotate forward, bringing the hand back down to the knees. Lengthen the spine. Inhale, bring the shoulders up towards the ears and then rolling them down the back, pulling the arms or shoulders towards the earth. If at any point you find you're holding your breath, come back to focusing on the breathing and just pause there because really the breath is everything in yoga. We connect the mind, the breath with the body. So if any of those elements are out of focus, then we're not getting that full experience that we're here for. We're going to start to come out of the seat by bringing our arms up and overhead one more time. Inhale as we reach. Exhale, we're gonna start leaning forward, getting this nice forward fold. If our back is really tight, you might wanna come up in length and halfway. Really wanna try tilting the pelvis, pulling that tailbone back that we're rotating from the hip and pelvis first before rounding in. Coming down as low as you're able to, start to tuck the chin in. And if you're able to get relatively close to the floor or all the way down, you might want a pillow, blanket, or bolster to rest the head on. And for me, this is where I'm going to remove my cushion so I can go a little deeper into this fold. On your next inhale, start to just lift the head and peek up. It may not be possible for all of us. For me, I'm going to roll up by pressing my hands into the floor and rocking up onto my knees. If that is uncomfortable for you for any reason, you might walk the hands back and bring the feet around to the side. Either way you take, we're gonna reach that tabletop posture by unfolding the feet behind you coming back onto your full length of the mat. Hands are gonna be underneath the shoulders, so they're just kind of check in. You might need to step them back a little bit. We're gonna soften the elbows, 
really pressing into the pinky and the thumb. What we're trying to do is create an actual cupping of the hand. This is a challenge for a lot of us. Um, this takes pressure off of the wrists. So if we're struggling with wrist pain or a lot of pressure, you're just not quite understanding uh, how I'm pressing my hand, the thumb and the pinky into the mat. A good alternative is to make fists and to press the fist into the mat. This is gonna help take a little strain off of the wrist. Checking in that the knees are underneath the hips and you might wanna look down and actually see where your hips are. A lot of us have a misconception about how wide our hips really are. I see a lot of people go much wider and in some cases bringing the knees together. We really just wanna be directly supporting the hip. So very common posture in yoga is the cat and cow and this is going to just warm up the spine and the whole body kind of gets the energy moving the blood flowing throughout the body and loosens us up so we're going to inhale by dropping the belly down pushing up through the hands and shoulders looking up we're going to pull that tailbone towards the sky deeply inhale this is cow and as we exhale we start to roll or tilt the pelvis forward Pull the navel or belly button up, start to curl the head down, press into the shoulders as you exhale deeply. When you're ready to inhale, gentle bend in the arms, bring that chest heart forward, head looks up again, tilt the tailbone towards the sky, inhale. Continuing this breath and movement not to my rhythm, but to your own. And again, there's a lot happening and a lot to think about. Trying to still inhale and exhale just through the nose, if possible. Noticing how we're moving. That we're actively pressing and pulling and tightening and loosening. We're not just dumping in. We're not just allowing the body to fall when we inhale. We're actively pulling forward and up. We're actively pressing into the earth or the mat. We're aware of how that body is moving to transfer from one pose to the other. These are the fundamentals of the mind, breath, and body. A couple more, keep going. And when you come to the top of that next inhale, try to straighten the spine again, looking straight down at the mat, lengthen the neck. I'm gonna bring the toes together, start to spread the knees. And again, if the knees are uncomfortable, you might wanna be utilizing that blanket here or even in tabletop a little extra cushion. So as we widen the knees about the width of the mat, maybe wider depending on your height, maybe not as wide if you're a little smaller frame, bringing the hips back, top of the feet, any amount. And again, if this is uncomfortable or we have a lot of pressure on the knees, you can sit on a block or you can roll up a blanket to put underneath or behind the knees to support you and not put as much pressure there. Start to reach or walk the hands forward as you come down into this pose. We really wanna lengthen and draw those shoulders up. You can start to press the fingers into the mat and kind of lift the palms or wrists up above for a few breaths. We really wanna press that third eye or the forehead right into the mat here. There's a lot of pressure points in that part of the face, all over our face really, but right in that particular area we're channeling that energy. Relax the arms down. Tell the whole body to melt into this pose. Child's pose is the resting posture. We always encourage this posture at any time throughout a practice. 
um, especially in our more challenging practices. If your body is not ready and you need a rest or a particular posture is just not for you, this is the recommended go-to pose. It allows you to recover here, to reconnect with your breath. Start to push those hands back into the mat. Inhaling to look up as you rise again. Bringing those knees back under the hips. Um, and there's just a few different things depending on where you're at with this today. I encourage you to just start with that breath work and these small movements and connecting with who you are and where you want to go with your practice. Um, Nothing major to end today's practice, but I always want to get the legs elevated. So if you only have a short amount of time and you're just getting back into your practice, I'm going to encourage us to come back to lying on the back. I'm just going to bring both of my knees forward, crossing my ankles and coming back into a seat, but you can get there any way that works for you bringing the legs out in front. Again, maybe just stretching out those legs and ending here is what you need to do, drawing the shoulders down and back, softening the knees. Or you can bring the feet to the mat, start to round in. I like to just support from behind the legs, bringing those knees to the chest, rocking a little bit here. This gets our legs elevated. And I usually take it from that tucked in little back massage of rocking to lifting the feet. Draw the shoulders down into the mat and just elevate the arms. We're not reaching for the sky. We're not reaching for our feet. What we're doing here is allowing that blood flow to come back to the body. We rarely get our feet elevated in through our normal days. Even if you're doing this right before bed, this is going to bring that high level of oxygen and energy back into the heart, towards the body, and also take some relief off the feet, the legs. Start to bring some movement to the wrists and ankles. And in my classes, I always encourage a little self-massage. Maybe you bend the knees a little bit to reach up by the ankles and just squeeze the legs, starting from the feet down towards the body. Also noting that there is lymphatic fluid throughout our body, that if we don't elevate our feet, that lymphatic fluid, which helps us fight disease, does not circulate in the way that it is intended. So a lot of what these postures do for us in yoga is it squeezes and massages those lymph nodes throughout the body. And then we like to end by getting that fluid moving. I hope you've taken some time to just reconnect with yourself this morning and every morning. Even if it's before you get out of bed, just bringing these knees in and rocking and stretching them out, allowing the mind to awaken, setting an intention for your day, coming back to who you are and who you want to be. We'll see you next week. Have a beautiful spring morning.